Hey guys, welcome back to the 1960s single story ranch retrofit that we've been doing this series on. Uh, my family lives in here, uh, my mom and dad, and we're using this house to kind of show how you can retrofit uh, an older house to perform like a newer house. Not exactly like, not like the house that we're building down the street, but similar. So. Right now is a good time to test. You can see the blower door is here behind me. We're gonna do a little bit of enclosure testing in a minute, but I wanna explain, first of all, you would do this test in the middle of the day that you're working on this with your crew, or in the middle of the week that you're working because you wanna track your progress. This has taken us months. Hi, my name is Corbett. I live in 200 square feet with two little kids. We have a television show that we're making. We're building a house. This is taking a lot longer. Also, my dad and I are the crew down in the, the crawl space. Also, in the middle of that performance enhancement on the house, uh, we also added an addition. And when I say we, I mean my parents hired a crew to come in and build an addition on the house. So those uh, guys and us guys are not necessarily doing the same thing. So we wanna also check their work and find out what the addition now has done to the house. So let me take you back in time to when we were framing and sheathing the addition and show you the system that we used to try and ensure that that addition was gonna be about as air sealed as the rest of the house. What we are cutting and installing is zip system. It's paneling with an integrated weather barrier. That means that it's gonna serve as substantially airtight and water resistant so that rain and all that stuff gets carried away. That means that you can get rid of the extra steps for any kind of house wrap or paper for the walls and for the roof. This is brown. There's more that's green. The colors don't really matter. You can actually use them interchangeably. This happens to be 7 16 OSB stands for Oriented Strand Board, and we actually visited the factory and saw how this is made. I hope to bring you a video on that. But they uh, have this huge deli knife basically and they just shave the wood so that they can orient the strands so that it's like plywood but it's made up of small pieces that are then glued together so there's glue throughout and they actually become one thing this is put on the membrane is put on along that process and it they try to make it easy for you there's a fastener marks so that we can give it to a normal construction crew and they can say oh yep this is just like working with plywood then we use liquid flashing to seal the bottom of it to the cinder block wall that you can see behind me, that's the crawl space, because you wanna make sure to air seal that and also not let bugs in and all that stuff. So this is important. And then we also have tape. There are several different kinds of tapes. The roller is an important uh, aspect of this because all of the tapes that you're gonna work with, no matter who they come from nowadays, if they're really hardcore and they're gonna be rated to last for decades and decades, are pressure applied. So you're gonna to need to make sure to press it pretty hard because no one's ever gonna get behind the brick or the siding that we're gonna cover this with later and press this down. So this is a really important step. You need to be using things like squeegees or rollers or whatever it is that the particular manufacturer has specified for you. This should make this structure last a much longer time than it would have if it had building paper that was not taped, which often happens. So it's this rush through the construction schedule that often gets people in trouble and that making everything one step instead of five different steps, one of which could be missed, is in my opinion a pretty valuable thing to do. Now Zip has helped us out with a couple of things. One is this roller has little Z's on it. That means that you can, simply by looking at this tape, tell whether somebody spread it with their hand or actually pressed it in with this because when you use this, it leaves these little Z indentations in the tape. That is an easy tip for QC. Now I can come out and tell that these guys didn't, you know, use this roller everywhere like uh, we specified. However, there is one issue with using something that looks like caulk. This is the Zip liquid flashing. Liquid flashing, if you look up pictures online, it's supposed to be thick. It's a thick, goopy mess. Uh, it's not supposed to be nice and pretty like caulk is. This comes in a, what looks like a caulk uh, bottle with a caulk applicator, even though this is a zip specific gun. What we end up with, if you're not careful, is this. Come look at how precious this caulk line is. That is, first of all, they only trimmed a tiny little piece off the end of the nozzle here. And these are removable, so I can use this one tip forever for the entire house if I want to. And they just came along and went Now this is supposed to be liquid flashing. So what happens when water runs down this 
and then hits this, nothing. It's just gonna sit right here and it's gonna find its way through all these little gaps and cracks in that flashing. What we're talking about really is this. That is what we're talking about. So you don't need to be precious with this stuff. It is not caulk, it's not supposed to look nice. It's supposed to do weather sealing, air sealing, water sealing, all that stuff is really important. The places where you can tell people are gonna miss corners and stuff like that, if they didn't pay attention to the corners, you know they probably didn't pay attention to a lot of the other stuff. So you wanna make sure to get, get up in there and then spread it around. This should be a good time. It's fun to be messy. Pretend that you're back in preschool again. So you can see why quality control inspections are very important and that the other part of the quality control is the testing, which we're about to do. Now the blower door test, when we first got to this house before we had done anything to it, was 5044 CFM at 50, which is how you read the raw numbers that come out of the blower door. When we tested before the addition went on, but after they had already started demolishing in the last video, we had a thousand CFM that we had cut out of the number. So we ended up around 4,000 CFM. That is a huge gain and we were very proud of that. Now that the addition is done, we have the ability to test what the addition leakage is on top of what we knew we had in the last video. So here we go. So you can see that we're back up to 4,500. That means the addition added 500 CFM of leakage. How does it do that? Through things like Windows and doors? Yes, of course, a little bit, but also through things that you're not suspecting, like plumbing penetrations, electric penetrations, things like that. Again, because we're building a bigger house over there, we've got the television show, I was not hired, or, or <laughs> this is my family, so I was not uh, requested to be brought in and hold up the construction schedule and be a third-party inspector. And so I don't know exactly how they did all that stuff because they worked really fast. That's one of the things about my own crew. I like that it's my family, my mom and dad and my bride helping build this house for us because we get to go as slow as we need to in order to ensure that everything's right. That would drive most people crazy. But this is one way that you can find out after the fact what might have happened in there. And we're at the crawl space. In the very first video of this series, we tested with a zonal pressure test the crawl space's relationship with outside versus with the house. And we found that it was mostly outside. It was a 90% connection to outdoors. Uh, we did not want that because we've got all kinds of stuff in there. And if you wanna revisit that, go back to that first video and rewatch it. But right now, what we wanna know is how much more inside have we made it? At the very beginning, we tested the zonal pressure inside the crawl space with reference to outside, it was a five. Right now, we're clocked in at 20 which means that we have moved it significantly more inside. Now it's 40% inside, but it's still 60% outside. So now we can assess how much more work we wanna do in there based on the targets that we had set. If we're shooting for 100% inside, 0% outside, we still have quite a way to go. Now, the other side of this is that the crawl space is connected to the attic through things like the chimney chase. So when we do work on the attic, it will also affect the crawl space numbers. All of that is how complex the picture of home performance dynamics are. So remember, if you want guaranteed performance results, the numbers need to be in the contract, the targets that you're shooting for. You also need to make sure that you are giving extra time to find and correct those mistakes if they are there, and extra money to do this stuff, the extra, extra effort that is gonna be taken to do it. Uh, now, we're gonna show you in the next video some of the inside of that addition and some of the features aside from the zip system. We, we did a couple other things that are important to point out to you on the inside. And we're gonna go over some of the side effects that have started happening to this house and will happen to others as a result of some of the air sealing measures that we've been taking. So make sure to comment, like, subscribe. Tune in next time.